Hello Polygoners, I am Shaft, you are watching Polygon Gaming's Daily Casts, and that means we are on Odyssey Lottery or Edition today with these two amazing players, because here on the top left hand side, in the blue Protoss trunks, he has once claimed that Protoss is not as manly as it could be, it's Alicia! I always thought it was interesting that someone named Alicia would make a statement like that, but uh, he's a good guy. Went ahead and did his mandatory military service and came right on back to pro gaming. Haven't really seen him that much in a while, but we've seen a lot of this girl. It's none other than the Queen of Blades. She's been featured on the show quite a bit lately. It's Scarlet. Alright, so this is a fairly slow opening game, and I want to talk about why. First of all, particularly in this matchup, this section is particularly vulnerable. Pig talked about that quite a bit lately. Link in the description to him doing so. Odyssey, we see a much bigger spread on these bases. These bases, once you go to three, you've already got this kind of area there and there. Uh, if you go to four, you either take this gold, which is super exposed, or you take this this fourth step base down here, and there's a huge arc where units can come in from. Uh, not to mention these massive wide areas in front of the natural, which are also very dangerous areas where Hydra Baneland can come in. But also, you take a base here, and you can take a base here. Usually those are the third and fourth, respectively. Parking an army here gives you access to attacking both, as well as this natural. And it's really hard to hold a third and a fourth. This particular set of maps is hard for Protoss once the third or fourth comes out. So Scarlet, who's been playing super aggressive in almost every other matchup, has just been chilling, making her economy, taking super fast bases. Of course, going to have to repel this adept. <laughs> Ever since... uh. Protoss got access to that unit, they have loved it. They really needed an early game scouting and harassment unit, and this was really, really what they wanted, and they have, they're they definitely showing it. Of course, the Stargate is a very popular follow-up. Oracle, of course, super popular, but a Stargate can't really punish bases, so Scarlet gonna be very happy with her decision. Once this Oracle comes out, Oracles, of course, can kill a lot of workers, but as long as she stays a very mineral-heavy style, which she's been maintaining pretty much in every other matchup she should be just fine And the Oracle's coming in and trying to kill off as many of these workers as possible. Only five workers, however, have been killed. This has been a very passive game from both of these players. And, of course, three bases are solidly established with full saturation. Both players are on 54, now 58 workers for the Zerg. Should be getting a fourth base right around here. Yep, momentarily the creep is connected there. And a little bit more harassment here from the Oracle's got to be careful of those spore crawlers. He's been very careful to do so, but there are a lot of queens on the map. He's got to be careful not to take too much more hole damage. There's not a lot more of those Oracles can take. Now we've got a lot of uh, gateway uh, gateways on the field right now. That is about seven to eight gateways. And there's an Archon being morphed here. So the Baneling Nest is going to be super useful uh, that Scarlet made a little bit earlier in this game. Also getting Baneless and Speed, Hydras. So a Ling Hydra Baneling style that is very, very low tech. But most of the units are mineral based with, you know, a couple of upgrades and a limited expenditure of gas on hydro so they're not that much more gas expensive compared to a roach and do a lot more damage so with a very fragile nature of his composition adepts are going to be what alicia wants to go for i think i might have said that wrong with the uh the natural composition weaknesses of scarlet's comp yeah we're just gonna move on sorry guys pronouns not my thing Scarlet, I love you. I respect you. You're awesome. In any case, um, 
We do have two Robos completing right now for Alicia, but here's the deadly fourth base. We talked about that a little bit earlier when Pig, you know, definitely predicts that on this map it's going to be around the third to fourth base where Zerg begin to uh, tear their opponent apart. Right now, Scarlet's only about 10 army supply ahead of her opponent. But she does have the plus one upgrade, plus two on the way. But more importantly, she's got the Banelings to take out large amounts of the gateway units. And this is mostly gateway units right now. Robo units tend to be a little bit better against Banelings. You know, Immortals, you know, they don't really like them. Neither do Colossi, but they can take it a lot better than pretty much all of these units. Archons, of course, being such low range, if the Banelings hit... It usually just takes them right on out. Very, very, very good unit. But Banelink Speed makes it hard for them to snipe before the, the connection happens. So we'll see how this uh, this engagement ends up going. We've got a split force coming out now for the Queen of Blades. And Hydra Baneling Ling. And some of those Ling's going to be morphing into Baneling. So the Baneling's just going to be there to wipe out the uh, the Gateway Force. Oracle going to scout this. Wiped out. And there are the Banelings rolling right on in. And we see the Banelings kind of getting eliminated before they can connect with the Archons. A little bit of indecisiveness there for the Queen of Blades. But she does have this army snaking its way around the other side of the map. Intercepting these Zealots. Which look like they were uh, meant to harass her. Not going to be able to do just that. Some of the Ling's going to be morphed into Banelings. That's all a whole lot of morphing banelings that is 16 banelings 38 something like that lings are going to be coming in as reinforcements and this army is finally snaking its way over here to this third base and it looks like there's an open uh pathway right in here i think this right here is blocked off we'll see when she does choose to engage but meanwhile we've got an attack happening right on over here Woo! big baneling hits ah uh, there we go there we go those force fields doing their work but ultimately the banely is going to be able to go right on through if any of those connected we knew that was going to be huge but there are mortals on the field and the archons are in the back but when some of these other banely start rolling through the stalkers are going to go ahead and melt there and some more stasis wards going to be uh picking up some of those baneling shots but the Hydras and the Banelings just doing way too much damage over here. Colossi looks like it may fall, and it looks like uh, Alicia tapping out. Before we end this, though, I do want to come back here a little bit and see what was happening on this other uh, front. There was a lot going on there. I felt like it would be a little bit more uh, interesting to see, you know, step by step what was going on in each battle rather than trying to bounce between the two. So let's get back to that moment. <laughs> All right, so the Hydra is going to be coming in here, and that is going to force the overcharge without losing any of the Banelings. Mothership Core now uh, only down to half energy, so there's going to be a couple more overcharges. So this really was just to force this attack to be able to happen. Now that the overcharge is over, she is completely aware of it. Now the overcharge is swinging back in here, but a little bit too little too late. And it looks like the Hydra is going to be able to outrange most of the... Uh, the overcharges and even some of the mainlings able to remain during this attack. Huge pickup there and uh, great tactical decision making from Scarlet. Because um, remember, while all of that was happening and she was microing and controlling all of that and making all of these fast decisions, she was also doing the exact same thing over here. So she was able to completely multitask and make so many tactical and positional adjustments. This is what makes her such a phenomenal player. I love watching her games. I love casting her games. She is one of my personal favorite players. I have nothing but the utmost respect for this girl. Thank you so much, Sasha. I'm glad you came back to StarCraft. Please stay a very long time. Guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.